So after about 20 minutes of work or so with the 320, it's looking a lot better here. You can see, you can see the flatness. Now if you look on there, you'll see the dull spots are still a little bit on the corners there, very little bit. But uh, you gotta, it, it takes a long time to get those out and it's not real critical for me. This isn't a plane that I'm going to use a, a lot uh, when I do, but subsequent sharpenings as I work that down, as that gets shorter and shorter over the years, we'll pick those up, those corners up, but I'm, I'm really happy with it the way it is. So I'll finish this off with a 1500, put a polish on it. We'll go back and just touch up that edge and then we'll, uh, I'll show you how leather is your friend. So we can just finish up our polish by dragging it backwards, rotating it up until we feel that resistance from that edge. So here you can see, you can see that polish, that 1500 polish on there. So how the strap is designed to work is it, uh, it's made to fit inside your carpenter's bench. And you've got a nice sturdy platform right there. The jeweler's rouge here you can see is just, it's kind of wrapped up in some paper there, but you, you just put a little on there, on that leather. I guess most people think or feel that the rough side out is the best for sharpening. I've used both ways. I can't say that I, I can tell a lot of difference. But we're gonna, we're gonna go in a backwards fashion with a lot of weight, a lot of weight, as much weight as we can put on it without bending the tool. And we're gonna strop this in this motion, kind of down, rotating up about, sometimes I'll go about at least 50, sometimes 100. And of course the acid test is, you can see how, how sharp it is. So I think we're ready to put this all back together. Now before I put them together, I keep a, my ballast all in a little, in a really nice high quality rag in a metal tin. Um, and I wipe all my tools down with it. So since this is gonna be kind of in there where we're hard to get to it, I'll have a tendency to rust. So now's a good time just to put a nice protective coating of ballast all or whatever you're protectant of choice is. So this here, uh, I've been told by people I trust that this should be about uh, maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so, not very much. You can see there, it's just a slight bit. I don't know exactly how critical that is. Every time I pull out these screwdrivers, someone asks me about these screwdrivers with the beautiful oval handles. These are made by the Footprint Cabinet Company in Sheffield, England. And they are beautiful screwdrivers. Uh, my friend Declan uh, sent me a set of these that I really treasure. I saved them only for my fine woodworking. There you can see that looks pretty nice there. So let's put it all back together. and. See if we can't get our carpenter's bench perfectly level. Advising clinic mechanics to come off it was advising level one potential evacuation for North Atlantic Plain, Scott Road. There it is, the evacuation order, and still no call for resources to come and help from the lo lo local districts. I, I don't get it. Let's put a little ballast all on the frog here while we have it open. 
Okay. We can put our iron in. And be very careful at this point. We don't want to damage that edge that we put so much time into. Okay. Beautiful tool. There we go. So are you ready to see how the big plane works on smoothing out the bench? Actually, several, several of you have corrected me. This is not a smoothing plane. I guess it's called a jointing plane. Uh, since so many people gave that answer, I'm assuming it's right. I, I'm sure I misspoke. Actually, I started without you and I was gonna just level this. I thought, oh, eh, I probably don't need to film all that. But uh, then I knew there would be wailing, of gnashing and wailing and gnashing of teeth if I didn't. So I've got one side done here, I'll show you, and then we'll uh, bring you on over and we'll do the other side. But uh, what, a, uh, what a, talk about a tool that's a perfect tool for the job. So you can see here on the right is uh, the side that uh, I just completed. And then uh, this one here I messed, just started with a little bit, but we'll, uh, we'll finish this together here. But what a nice job it, had, it, it was. You know, as these two by fours, you know, these, this bench was just built out of Home, Home Depot two by, two by stock that I planed down. There was a lot of movement in it. You know, it had to, even though it was kiln dried, it uh, had to kind of climatize to our area, altitude and all of that. And what that gave was, was you know, different variations in the wood. And it was no longer very flat. So now you can, well, you can't see, but I can see because of this plane, it's so long, it knocked down all the high spots and it is wonderfully flat. It just feels like glass. Just a perfect tool for the job. Having that long uh, frame on it uh, lends itself to cutting very flat surfaces or to be able to do a flat surface. You know, it's the same principle as a road grader. That's why road graders are so long. You know, they don't, they're not affected by every little dip and dent indentation in the road. So if we come over here, we can see on this bench, now you see the, the light colored areas here, of course, were the high spots or are the high spots. That's where the plane is cutting first. And as we continue on, we'll keep going until we get down into the lower re regions there. So there, it's really a, a telltale sign of what type of condition your bench is in. You could do this with the smaller planes as well. You're just not going to get, you're just not gonna get that super flat surface. You know, the same principle here is when we file crosscut saws. You know, this, this jointer, for example. This is the exact same principle, this filing jointer being nice and long as the plane. You know, as we file our teeth, that's, that file that surface area is spread over a great distance. So, anyway, I'm digressing. Let's start, uh, let's start cutting and uh, I'll show you how it works. So setting the depth of the blade, of course, is really critical. What I've noticed with this plane is the adjustment is v exceedingly sensitive. This is a much higher quality plane than these. These here are the, what are they, Stanley Handyman series, and there's a lot of, I notice a lot of slop when you're, adjusting them. I've never used such a nice plane as this where it's so precise. When I lift up the, cl the, the clip, just the tiniest increment, just the tiniest little turn greatly affects the depth of the blade. Because the number eight has so much weight and mass, once it's in motion, it stays in motion. It really just powers through anything. Doesn't seem to be uh, even phased by uh, wood grains or uh, knots or anything of the sort. Another nice thing about this big plane, you can see here, this is my main, uh, my main Wilton vise here. Uh, we, you, we want the top of these, uh, the wood blocks, these oak hardened blocks to be uh, this, not any higher than the bench. And so I can span the distance and you can see, and I can take those down so that they're the whole bench 
is exactly the same height. So there we have it. We have an absolutely flat surface area. This bench, I've never really considered it done until this process here. Actually, there's two more things to do and then we can officially put the lid on this. I'm sorry to say you're gonna have to wait to see what the final two things are, but it'll be worth your wait. So that'll come in the next part. So as you can see, I've got my Nomex yellows on. We just got the call, or I just got the call. Um, they're evacuating a local town to the mountain, to the big fire to the north and they are calling local resources to go up there and to try to save uh, the homes uh, that are in the way of the fire. So uh, I should be uh, heading up one of those engines. I'm just uh, all packed, ready to go. I'm waiting for the call and I'll be taking you along uh, for that too, uh, be sure. So one thing that uh, uh, being on call with the fire department is I have uh, ba two bags packed. I've got uh, a large bag uh, which has everything that I would need to survive self-sufficiently minus food uh, for two weeks. Uh, that's the longest deployment now you're able to go out before you come home. So that means 14 pair of socks, 14 shirts, you know, all the things, your daily things that you change. I don't mind being in dirty Nomex, but one thing I can't have is, is, not, is, uh, is dirty socks. I'm very particular about my socks and I'll tell you 14 pair of 0.6 socks uh, is, a, is an investment. But I kind of look at the fire, the, the, if a fire goes state mode, sometimes we get paid a little bit, it's not much. Uh, but that money I reinvest back into it for gear uh, to make myself more effective and more comfortable. So that's ready and that, may, that could call could happen at any time. In the meantime, we'll just keep on uh, making our, our regular videos. But I do have a Manly Manners for you today. I was reading through here and I found one that I kind of liked and I thought that it was really appropriate here. Um, Manly Manners, it says here, uh, don't settle down into an old married man while you are still in the prime of your life. Take your wife out and about, give parties, visit your friends, and you will keep much younger than if you settle into the smoking jacket and slipper habit. Well, that's so true, isn't it? Uh, we, we're reaching the age now where we have looked at some of our friends, some of my friends, that are actually even younger than I am, that have turned into old men, curmudgeonly old men, pretty much given up on many things in life that have brought them joy and happiness and, and youth and vitality. I think this is wonderful advice. And one thing, and I don't know, maybe I've just been blessed with, a, with an attitude or a, a kind of a young spirit, but I, I feel like I'm still a, a 20, 20 year old. I mean, I, of course I got, I have to wear bifocal glasses and there's a few little things, but nothing really to complain about. But I do feel good and, and I still enjoy um, excitement. I still, Mrs. Wrangler Star is very, very well, much the same way. She's young at heart. And, and I, I think that that's a wonderful advice to, to me as well as to you to uh, take something up. If you like, go, go sign up for some dancing lessons with your wife or go sign up for, for whatever. Get, do something you've never done before, something that you've always wanted to do when you were a kid. Um, because there's no reason why you can't. There's no reason uh, not to get out and to enjoy those things. So that's it. So I, I ask you to keep my family in prayers and uh, for all of the firefighters that are um, making great sacrifices in this area, I keep them in your prayers as well. And, and um, the nice thing about this one is I'll be home at night, 12 hour, 12 hour shifts, and then it's so close I'll be able to come home. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video. Mm -hmm.